Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to show you the three best websites you can use to get started freelancing. If you're just starting out and you're part-time or on a budget, I've got a few places you can check out that won't break the bank. Hey there, what's going on guys? My name is Scott and on this channel, I make tutorials on Adobe Premiere, Photoshop, and I also do videos like this one on freelancing tips and tricks. So please consider subscribing and hit that notification bell if you don't wanna miss any of those. So for today's video, I'm going to be answering a question that I got in my last video, how to get started video editing in Premiere. And to check that out, you can click the link above. This question comes from Isabella who asked, I'd love a video about getting started on becoming a freelance editor. What are the best freelancing websites to apply for jobs? And what tips and suggestions for anybody who's starting out? Thanks so much, great video. Thank you Isabella for submitting that question and that's a really good one to ask. I think a lot of people when they're first starting out, including myself, struggled with how and where do we find work. Well in this video I'm going to show you guys the top 3 sites that I use to get work as a freelance video editor. There's actually tons of freelancing sites online that you can search for and try out. So with that let's get right into it. So I have two here that I want to list as honorable mentions, which are Guru and Freelancer, and I think they're best suited for beginner freelancers on a budget. There's a low cost to get started and to bid on jobs, and there's a decent amount of various editing jobs available. Now, I haven't used these sites as much because when I was first starting out, I signed up for a bunch of these freelancing websites, and I actually ended up having more luck with the other sites that I'm about to mention. One of those sites is Fiverr. Fiverr is a website that normally is best for one-time or short-time gigs. Its advantage is that it's pretty easy to sign up and start using right away. And unlike other freelancing sites, you don't have to bid for clients. And then after some time when you've been established, Fiverr actually pushes clients to you by listing your profile near the top of searches. And Fiverr makes tipping very easy, so you can make a little bit of extra money on top of what you earned originally for the gig. However, there are negatives to Fiverr. Fiverr takes a 20% commission and most gigs are pretty low paying. So that 20% really eats into your profits. You get to set your own rates and what kind of editing jobs you can offer and what the turnaround time will be. However, there's a pretty strict policy on no contact outside of Fiverr. So that means that you cannot make a deal with a client outside the platform and then cut Fiverr out of their commission. Now we come to Upwork, which is a site that I've had the most success with. It's the most popular freelancing site and it offers lots of high quality gigs as well as not so high quality. Once you've been on the platform long enough, you can sort of get an idea of what a great job posting is before you even bid on it. I like to think of Upwork as a long-term lead generator because I've had several clients that I met years ago who I still work with today, and it all started with one project. Now, it can be difficult to get that first client, however, because it is very competitive, but once you do, it gets much easier to land future clients. You also have the flexibility of what kind of projects you can do, such as getting paid by the hour or paid per project. The negatives of Upwork are that it's kind of expensive to get started. You can sign up for free, but in order to bid on any jobs, it costs 15 cents per credit. And most postings range from four to six credits. So if you were to bid on a ton of jobs, that 15 cents starts to add up. Also, Upwork has a complex commission rate. I'm not gonna go too deep into it right now, but essentially it's 20% for the first $500 you make per client. And then after that, it goes down to 10%. But remember, that's per client. So every time you land a new client, Upwork takes 20% of your earnings off the first $500. Also, when it comes to disputes between freelancers and clients, Upwork almost always sides with the clients. So I would recommend doing hourly gigs because typically per hour gigs tend to be more long term and Upwork has time tracking features built into its platform that make it easier to prove disputes between yourself and a client over work done. This next one may surprise you, but I've actually landed some pretty great clients from Craigslist. The cool thing about Craigslist is, is that the jobs are local to where you live, so you can meet up with a client face to face and discuss the job detail in person. Meeting in person and developing relationships really drives the ultimate goal, which is to create long lasting client relationships. Plus, there's no bidding on gigs or commission rates getting in the way. So hopefully when you look for gigs on the site and reply to a posting, you can connect with some really great people. Now, on the flip side, Craigslist does have a pretty sketchy reputation for being a place where weirdos hang out, so you do have to be on your guard. Also, there's no gig or job protection here, so if a client stiffs you after you've done the work for them, that's totally on you. Now, there are some things you can do, such as ask for half of the project payment up front, or even a quarter of it, just to protect some of your costs. But it's definitely a risk you have to take. 
The last negative I would say is that it's more of a time commitment to drive out and to meet a potential client somewhere. Whereas if it doesn't work out on a place like Upwork or Fiverr, it's not as big of a deal because you never had to leave your house in the first place. The thing about freelancing is not everybody is doing it full time. Some may be freelancing part time as a side hustle. Some might be doing it every once in a while as a hobby. And not everyone has the same budget in order to get started freelancing. So I understand that everyone's situation is different. There's a lot more information I could deep dive into on each site, and I probably will do that in future videos, so stay tuned for that. But I think the sites that I mentioned are definitely a great place to start if you're looking to get into freelancing as a video editor. Also, I just want to say, if you've been enjoying this video so far, please do hit the like button and share this video with anyone you might think might also enjoy it. Okay, so let's get to the next part of Isabel's question about tips and suggestions that I have for getting started with freelancing. I think a great place to start is to try to have an understanding of what it takes to build a business. No one really knows what it's like to build a business when they're first starting out, so you have to seek out sources and people who do have that information. And I know it's weird, especially when you're first starting out, to think of yourself as a business, but that's the reality. You have to go to clients and try to sell yourself and your services in order to get jobs. So I think of a good way of becoming more confident in building your freelancing business is to actively learn as much as you can from different sources. I'm always trying to learn what other people's strategies are and how they became successful so that I can pick up a few things here and there and apply it to my own freelancing business. In fact, I recently just finished reading a book called Three Simple Steps by Trevor Blake. And I think it's a really good book to inspire people who are just starting out freelancing or creating their own business. I'll just quickly read the description from Amazon. Despite stock market crashes, dot-com busts, and a specter of recession, the author started a virtual company from home using a few thousand dollars of his savings. A few years later, without ever hiring an employee or leaving his home office, he sold it for more than $100 million. As the economy slipped into another freefall, he did this again with a company in a different field. He accomplished this through no particular genius, rather he studied the habits of many successful men and women who preceded him and developed three simple rules that if followed diligently virtually ensure success. Using them first to escape poverty, then to achieve a life of adventures, he finally turned them toward financial independence. Written in a straightforward and no-nonsense style, Three Simple Steps shows you how to take back control of your destiny and reshape your mind for increased creativity, serenity, and achievement. While building on the wisdom of great thinkers and accomplished individuals from the East and West, Three Simple Steps isn't a new age text or guide to esoteric fulfillment, rather it's a practical guide to real life achievement by a pragmatic businessman who attributes his incredible success to those very simple ideas. Three Simple Steps, a 2013 Small Business Book Awards winner, is a must read guide for anyone who wants to achieve more, live better, and be happier. So the three simple steps in the book, in case you were wondering, are number one is to spend more time thinking positively about the things that you do want rather than the things that you don't want. For example, in the case of freelancers, no one likes having to bid for jobs or chase down clients, but you could reframe that thought as the more jobs I bid for, the better practice I'll have at understanding what clients want. The second step is to spend 20 minutes a day, preferably in the morning, and quiet time by yourself so that you can clear your mind from the outside world. And from that, creativity and inspiration for your business can spring from it. In the third and final step, the author talks about setting intentions rather than goals. The difference as the author explains it is that an intention is a goal, but with all the doubt of its attainment removed. So as freelancers, a goal might be, I hope to make enough money this year to quit my regular job, but an intention would be, I know I will make enough money this year to quit my regular job. And you have to set your mindset to that intention every single day. And that's a really hard thing to do, but in the end, that's what will make it so rewarding. I would highly recommend this book because I found it to be really insightful about starting and growing a business from the ground up. But I will say the first couple chapters were kind of slow because they were mostly about the author's life's journey, which did tie into the rest of the book in the later chapters, but I promise later on it gets into some really great stuff about how to grow a business. So if you're interested in that book, I'll leave a link below so that you can check that out. And so that about does it for today's video. Let me know in the comments below what freelancing sites do you guys prefer or use the most. I'd love to get a comment thread going so we can all help each other out on where and how to get jobs as freelancers. And I want to thank Mr. Smith's Originals for his awesome comment on my last video, how to get started video editing in Premiere. Again, you can check that video out in the link above. And thank you once more to Mr. Smith's Originals. I really do appreciate it. Also, please check out my social media pages on Instagram and Twitter. You can find the links in the description below. 
All right, that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.